Hey everyone, I'm Dan Weitzer, part of the innovation team at Independence Blue Cross, and this is The Spin. The Spin is a series where I ride bikes and talk to some of the most innovative people in the Philadelphia region. Today's guest is Chris Malero from Neuroflow. Neuroflow is doing some amazing things around integrating technology and mental health. So let's go meet him and go for a ride. Hey, hey Dan, Chris. nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. You ready to go for a ride? Yeah. Awesome, let's go. So congratulations on all the success that Neuroflow has had. Thanks. I literally was talking to Allison Garber from Venture for America recently, yeah. and she called Neuroflow the darlings of Philadelphia startups, wow. which was awesome. I haven't heard that, but that's great. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was an awesome description. So for those people who don't know, can you explain what Neuroflow does and, and what your company is all about? 100%. I mean, we're a mental health technology company that uses data analytics to promote access to behavioral health care resources and enable patients to engage with their treatment remotely. So we're, we're bridging that gap between physical health and mental health so that from now on, it should just be your health. So it's got to be a good feeling that you created a startup that's actually helping people. So the first thing I'd say is we're one small piece in a bigger puzzle, uh, but it, does, it feels great to, to be contributing in a small way. And so it's all something very personal to us and we enjoy being a part of something bigger than ourselves. Yeah, no, it's amazing. So have you always had that entrepreneurial drive to you? I, yeah, I think so, but I don't think it's because Entrepreneurship isn't about starting a company. It's about, it's a mentality. It's about how can I solve a problem that I'm dealing with uh, to be innovative in, in that problem solving process. Um, and so when I was in the army, I mean, as a platoon leader, I had the privilege of leading 40 soldiers. And when we were deployed, you had to be entrepreneurial because you yeah. didn't have all the answers. Sure, yeah. Um, so I think that, you know, entrepreneurship is a mindset that could be anywhere. Yeah, no, it's true. We believe the same thing at Independence. Right. So I, I totally get that. So your platform uses technology to help people with mental health. How do you see technology moving forward um, and, and helping people's mental states in the future? I'm really excited where technology is going to play a role in not just mental health, but healthcare in general. But to be clear, I don't foresee a future, at least in the near term, where technology replaces humans. I mean, the, the human touch, the human element, being able to look someone in the eye and talk to them about uh, different strategies on struggling with why I'm anxious this week, or you know, I'm, I have a, you know, a final exam coming up in a few weeks and I, I, I'm losing sleep over it. And so being able to talk to someone about those strategies and have that relationship is impossible to replace with technology. And so from, from us, from our technology platform, we're bridging that gap and we're using a lot of data, artificial intelligence to make available um, more precise insights so that patients can know when they need to get the care and then so providers can know when to intervene before things get really bad. Yeah, I love that. I feel like different technologies are coming together now yeah. and I was doing a talk uh, last year and someone said that telemedicine wasn't innovative. And I disagreed with them. I said, no, I think telemed isn't innovative. And they're like, well, Skype's been around forever. I said, right. oh, no, Skype has been around forever. Right. But the two were never married together where you can right. talk to your doctor at your home. So Absolutely. it is innovative. So right. I, I love that this technology is kind of morphing in a way to help uh, medicine rather than to um, kind of like separate. Like, no, we, we're going to do it the way right. we've always done it. So it's great to see the two come together. But, and so you hit on a good point. So the, the telemedicine not being innovative. I think what innovation really is, is it's a gradual improvement and build on technologies and processes that have been, uh, you know, have been created in the past. So innovation isn't about creating the next rocket that goes to Mars. That's innovative, right? But innovation really is the gradual steps that get us there. What gets exciting to me is, um, you know, in the startup world, we don't have the resources or time to invest in creating this groundbreaking technology right off the bat and launching with that. It's about incremental improvements, um, which is, can, if you think about it, if you, can, if you could take an existing technology and improve it even 10% and then do that you know, once a quarter, every week for 
uh, 52 weeks in a row. Um, that's very gradual improvement, but then when you look back over the last year, you're like, wow, like look where, we're, look where we've come from. And I think so innovation can even be the, a new application of existing technology. So we talked about tele, uh, telemedicine and how a lot of people are like, well, video technology has already existed, but it hasn't existed with bridging the providers and the patients in a you know, HIPAA compliant way that the patient feels comfortable with and so forth. So I think that's a perfect example of you're not creating this brand new technology, but you are creating a new application for a uh, already promising and existing technology. So Philadelphia is such a city of history mm -hmm. and we try to stay close to those roots of history, but we're also trying to be innovative and move forward. So is there anything in Philly that you think is needed right now to kind of make that next step as being an innovative city? First of all, I think the fact that we're a historical city uh, and have that tremendous amount of history is an asset and a unique competitive advantage to the city. We can build on that history. I think of that as a, as a positive thing. And so from the city's aspect, I think it's just creating a culture where the people and the innovators that come here for, the, for school and for training to stay here. At Penn, for the Wharton School, we had 800 MBA students from around the world that came to Philly, and I think 30 of us stayed in wow. Philly. Um, and so if we can figure a way out how to create this kind of culture and mentality of, no, Philly is, you, you don't have to go to New York or over to SF, uh, but stay here, innovate here, and create here, um, that I think will, will cause us to see huge strides forward. Um, I mean, it was a very deliberate decision to keep the company here, and we, we haven't looked back. I mean, it's been an amazing, amazing place to, to start a company. Um, and you know what? If we have to go to D.C. or New York, um, it's an easy train right away. So it's, it's a great city with great access. Um, I just Let's keep the people here and the talent here. Yeah, I mean, we have so many amazing universities 100%. here. 100%. And yeah. I agree, we need to try to keep those people here. There shouldn't be only 30 from 800, you know, person That's class staying here in Philly. Right. It's, it's amazing. Well, thank you for being on The Spin. We really appreciate it. Of course, thank you for having me. Neuroflow is doing amazing things. It's incredible, and I can't wait to see where you guys go in the future. Thanks. So thank you for watching this episode of The Spin, and make sure to check back next month for another Philly innovator. Thanks for watching.